How's it going, folks? Kind of going to take a page from one of the people I'm subscribed to here. I haven't done a vlog in a while. And I've been watching Mr. Blue Rose. And he come up with the his Sunday morning stories. Well, I'm a little late because it's late Sunday afternoon. I'm not going to be Sunday morning stories either. Just stories about some of the crap I used to get into as a teenager. Some of those are kind of funny and some are kind of interesting. He's talking today about how in Georgia he always got stopped speeding or whatever coming home from shows. And it's like I commented to him, that's something that I've not experienced anywhere else but in Georgia um, with the cops just riding past you on the road and just turning around and coming after you to harass you. I never got that anywhere else I've ever been like I did in Georgia. Sometimes it was because I was driving a almost brand new car. Um, and it was kind of flashy. Some of it was because I was driving a big old monster truck. Or occasionally it was just them telling me to turn my stereo down. Because I've always had uh, big stereo systems in most all of my vehicles. Of course, a lot of times the stuff I had, I had to go through trial and error and it was junk. But I just bought a 1985 IROC Z Camaro, brand new. Brought the thing home. I did a little rat racing in it and everything, but I wasn't happy with the way it performed. So I saw in one of my hot rod magazines where they had stage five hypertech chip that you could put in the 3.0 uh, high output Camaro. for it and put the thing in rode around at, uh, you had to ride around at like 50 miles an hour or 20 miles an hour then 50 let it acclimate to the car I forget how the how you, what the speeds were or whatever but got it acclimated to the car and then decided that evening that I was going to take this thing out and test it and see what it would do. I left my house at, I want to say at 10.05. Yeah, about 10.05 that evening I left the house and I drove very quickly to Macon, Georgia, which was, well, the spot that I drove to in Macon was about 20, two and a half, maybe 23 miles away. It should have taken me about 30 or 40 minutes to get there. I did it in five. I have no idea how fast I was going because my speedometer only went to 85 miles an hour and then the needle started bouncing all over the place. Well, thing is, the needle only bounces for so long and then it breaks. Found that one out the hard way too. Well, I rode around Macon for a little bit and I was actually told I had an 11.30 curfew. So about 10-15 minutes after 11, decided to head my butt back home. Really all I was doing was out running, trying to test the, the chip in my car to see what it would do. It, it, it 
was fast. I saw the doggone, doggone lines in the road go from being divided lines to what looked like just one solid line the whole way up the interstate. And the front end of the car started floating a couple times. I had to back out of it. When uh, I decided to start back towards um, Warner Robins from Macon, I was doing, uh, came up to what where they call Seven Bridges, which is basically why it's seven, I don't know, but um, it's basically like three different highways that join on to. 247 right there in, Warner, in uh, Macon and I had gone down towards the Macon Mall and then uh, jumped back on one of the roads that headed back towards Warner Robins and since I'd had all the fun I did going to Macon and I made it there in such short time I was gonna try and turn around and do the same thing on the way home sitting at the traffic light didn't pay any attention to the fact that there was a Bibb County Sheriff, which Macon is Bibb County. I didn't pay any attention to the fact that there's a Bibb County Sheriff sitting in the slow lane two cars back from me. I'm sitting in the, um, and it had rained earlier that day and there was ruts in the road there and the ruts were still full of water. I got ready to take off from the light when it turned green and of course I was the second person back from the light went to take off and them gator back tires that were on that car weren't worth a darn in the wet and of course they went to spinning didn't spin bad didn't squeak any just smoked a little well the sheriff saw the little puff of smoke coming off the wet back wheels and decided he was gonna try following me mind you I did not see him there I wasn't being totally ignorant I did some ignorant stuff as a teenager, but I wasn't being ignorant then because if I'd have seen him, I wouldn't have done it. But I pulled off from the light. The person that was in front of me got over into the slow lane, so I had the lane free and clear. Now, they had just rebuilt this lane to go, there was a, after you got off that little short straightaway, the road curved around and went up a really steep hill. Well, I took off from the light and like I said, I hadn't seen the sheriff there, so I was getting into it. Made it to the base of that hill in no time. And since they had just put it up there, since they had just redone it all, there was a lot of gravel that was spread all across the, the fast lane where people would go up around it and weren't used to it and they'd ride off the edge of the road and it'd scatter gravel back across the, the road again. Well, I went up around that corner, a real sharp uphill curve, at 90 miles an hour. I didn't know how fast I was going. Like I said, the speedometer only went to 85 and then the needle started bouncing. And it was bouncing. But, I was told later that the, uh, that I did 95 or 90 miles an hour going up around that curve, stayed in the fast lane, even with the gravel. Of course, I was spraying it on everybody else around me. And then right after you get to the top of that hill, there's a little drop. The road kind of drops down a little bit, and then it's just a flat, straight run for a good long while. Well, when I came off the top of that hill, my rock was airborne. And as soon as it landed again, it was gone. It hooked up and was gone. Well, as soon as the sheriff that was behind me now got to the top of the hill, he turned his little bubble gum machine on and decided he was gonna chase me down and give me a ticket. I looked back in my mirror and saw the light flashing and I knew it was for me. But no way in the world I was gonna stop. So, like I said, didn't know how fast I was going, but I knew I still had three-fourths of my gas pedal left to get until I hit the floor. I figured, heck, I made it in five minutes to making. I got this stage five chip in it. It does pretty doggone good. Let's see if I can outrun this sucker. And I'd heard of people outrunning cops coming back from making all the time. I mean, pretty much everybody I knew had stories of outrunning the cops. So I decided right then that this was going to be my time. I pushed that gas pedal down and pretty much disappeared. 
because I didn't see that light in my mirror again. Well, after you get past that long, straight, flat run, the road curves around in real dangerous curve. It curves around this way, then back around. And it's a 25, I think 25 mile an hour curve now. That's how sharp it is. And I think I came around that, if I remember right, I came around that curve, I'd slowed it down, came around at about 60. After I got through the curve and my tires got done making their little growly noise, I hammered on it again. Well, basically after you make that real sharp curve, it straightens out again and it's another long straight flat run all the way into Warner Robins, county lines right after the airport. Airport's off to the side of you during that long straight run again. I hit that long straight run, all of a sudden, just at the back end of the airport, there's a little road that comes out, and I see a sheriff sitting across both lanes of traffic. There were a couple people ahead of me that I was coming up on kind of fast, and the sheriff's sitting there waving the people around him, but he's sitting there with the light on. Well, I knew he was waiting on me, and I had done pick speed back up. Like I said, I made that curve, that 25 mile an hour curve, about 60, and then I just hammered back on it again. And when I seen him sitting there, I'd say I had about 300 yards to stop my car. I had to wind up standing on it, on the brakes, to get the car to stop. I'm standing on them, and it's not stopping. I mean, I'm not, I didn't stop them. I was just standing on it to get it to slow to a stop. And I got it back down to... 50, I think, and I was coming up on him kind of quick, so I snatched up the emergency brake, not a smart move, of course it was a new car and the brake was good, problem was when you snatch the emergency brake up, it grabs a whole lot harder than your regular brakes do in the front, that's your back wheels locking up, well I slid for probably about 20 yards let off the brake a little bit and then snatched it up again. When I did, my car started spinning around. I spun around probably about four good times and stopped with the back end of my car that far from the sheriff's driver's side door. And he had been waving people around, but he got back in his car when he saw me having trouble stopping. When I finally did stop, he's sitting there staring out the window at my license plate. I got a little message over his PA system telling me to get out of my key, or pull my car to the edge of the road, get out of my car, put the keys on the roof, and have my insurance and license out. Did what I was told. Pulled over to the side of the road after I got it straightened out on, on the road again. Set down, uh, or set my license down, set my insurance and all that down on the roof. The sheriff came over and said that he had been warned that I was headed that way and he was told to detain me. I said, Well, uh, for what reason? I said, I figured you caught me speeding, you'd write me a speeding ticket. And he says, uh, no, that's not why. About that time, the sheriff that turned his little bubblegum machine on came around the corner, pulled up behind me, got out and says, son, do you have any idea how fast you were going? I said, well, of course I was playing dumb. I knew doggone well how about how fast I was going. I had an idea, but just to seem like an ignorant kid, I told him, well, the speedometer says 85 on it. That's what I was doing. He said, son, you can't be that dumb. I was like, all I know is what the gauge says. He says, that car straight off the showroom floor will do 120 miles an hour. And I said, well, I don't know how fast it, it was going, but I know how fast the gauge said, and it said 85. Well, they were going to arrest me. And the guy says, well, do you have any idea why I even got behind you? I said, well, probably because when I started off at the light back there at Seven Bridges, the tire smoked a little bit because I was sitting in the water and it doesn't do well in wet. And he said, well, 
It was because you smoked the tires there, yeah. He said, so I was kind of curious if you were going to do anything else stupid. So I got behind you and started following you. He said, do you have any idea how fast you were going up around that new corner that they just built on the bridge there? I said, 50, maybe 60. He said, no, son. He said, this is still bothering me. He said, how in the hell you went 90 plus miles an hour? He said, because I wasn't right behind you then, but he said, you were showering gravel all over the, the highway. He said, and I've still yet to figure out how in the hell you went up around that curve in gravel, stayed in your lane, and then wind up flying off the road and killing yourself. He said, when I saw that you made it safe to the top of the hill, I decided that it's time to turn on my light and stop you before it got serious. I said, okay. I said, well, I didn't see a light or I'd have stopped. I was lying like, oh, I was lying like a daggum rug. He, uh, he says, then I turned my light on and you just disappeared. <laughs> but I couldn't outrun the radio. I did outrun him. I went back and measured it. I outran him by about eight and three quarters of a mile. And it took him about four minutes to catch up to me. He was in one of those old box style Chevy Caprices. Didn't have radar. All he had was his speedometer and he said that it was, um, it had been calibrated. So the 90 mile an hour was an estimate. And he actually wrote the ticket for 90 mile an hour, or 90 plus miles an hour. That was the first ticket. The second ticket was for, um, the other sheriff wrote me for 105 in a 50. Um, because he had radar and that's what he clocked me at after I made that 60 mile an hour uh, curve or 25 mile an hour curve at 60 and romped back on it I'd gotten back up to 105 and he wrote it excess of 100 miles an hour is what the ticket said um, from him then I got attempting to elude a police officer eluding a police officer endangering the life of a police officer there was two more um, endangering the lives of other other people on the road and reckless driving I wasn't reckless I had it completely under control the whole time now if something else would have ran out in front of me that would have been a different story but that late at night there wasn't much anything else out because that town was like any other small sleepy town they roll the sidewalks up at nine o'clock but the after they gave me the fistful of tickets uh, because they were or before they gave me the tickets I'm sorry they were going to just haul me off take me to jail the uh, sheriff asked me says well son what are you doing running that fast this late at night I said well what time is it and he says um, it's 1125 I said I've got five minutes to get home for curfew when I first started driving, I actually had an 11.30 curfew. When I turned 18, that went bye-bye. But I gave him that line anyway. They called my parents and handed me that fistful of tickets, told me that they were going to follow me to the state or to the county line, which wasn't but like a half mile down the road from where they stopped me. And if I was going to, if I even thought about going a half mile an hour over the speed limit, before I hit the uh, county line, they're going to take me to jail. I'm like, okay. They didn't follow me. I got just down, just down the road a little piece. Right at the county line, I stomped it and smoked them down. I was going probably about, I think the speed limit there was uh, 45 at the time. And as soon as I hit this, the county line, I stomped it to the floor. Just smoking through that, throwing the ass into the car sideways, and uh, made it home in two minutes. Um, went to court for it for all the tickets that I got six hundred and ninety five dollars. Six months suspended license meaning I couldn't drive at all. Six months restricted license after that where I could only use it for work and home. 
and if they caught me driving I was going to jail. I still drove. I drove the whole time. Now I'm not telling anybody out there to do this. This is a, my total ignorance and stupidity. I've gotten wiser since then. But I still drove. So basically for a year every time I got behind the wheel of my car I was looking over my shoulder. Anyway, I'm going to end it here. I just thought maybe I might find my little story interesting. Um, it is true. I'll show you the car. I'll put it up here right now. And I'll talk to you guys later. Uh, thank you for watching and y'all have a great day.